Hello everybody, welcome to Epic Future Space. I apologize for not uploading any new videos since January, and here we are now in April. But I'm here today to follow up on my last video on this channel where we talked about SpaceX's Dragonfly program. And a lot has happened in regards to the whole rocket landing and reusability efforts. So I wanted to talk about the progress in that area today so that I can move on to other subjects that I want to talk about on this channel really bad. So in regards to Dragonfly, just a few days after I put out my last video, we finally got to see test footage of the Dragonfly. This footage was published on January 21st, but it turns out that the test actually took place on November 24th of 2015. I'm highly suspicious that more tests have taken place, maybe even enough to move on to the next phase of testing, but without any proof or footage, I have no idea what sort of progress SpaceX has made since that November 24th test. And pff, what's probably gonna happen is we're gonna get some updates probably pretty soon after I release this video. Not that this channel has any influence on SpaceX whatsoever, but that just seems to be my luck. So, we need to talk about Blue Origin for a bit. On November 23rd of 2015, they surprised everyone by having their first successful rocket landing of their suborbital rocket, New Shepard, which launched, crossed the boundary of space, and came back for a soft-powered landing. That's friggin' sweet. But then they surprised everyone again by launching that same rocket a second time on January 22nd of 2016. And this time it reached a slightly higher max altitude and landed again safely under its own rocket power. In a nice change of pace, Jeff Bezos actually gave a heads up as to when the next launch would be. And New Shepard flew again for the third time on April 2nd of 2016. This time they even had suborbital experiments aboard the capsule, which tells me a few things. It seems to me that Blue Origin is poised to begin flying space tourists to suborbital space very soon. And they have a lot more progress than their competitors in the suborbital tourist market. A lot of people seem to think that Blue Origin is direct competition for SpaceX. And they might be someday when they get their orbital rocket flying. But in the meantime, I feel like SpaceX's rocket landing and reusability plans are a lot more ambitious than Blue Origin's current progress. Of the SpaceX launches so far in 2016, two of those missions tried and failed to land under rocket power on one of their autonomous drone ships out at sea, once in the Pacific and once again in the Atlantic. And for the Pacific launch for Jason 3, it came very, very, very close to landing on one of those drone ships. If not for one of the landing legs breaking, it just might have worked. To me though, even though it definitely failed a lot more than the Jason 3 launch's attempt, when SpaceX launched the SES-9 into geostationary orbit, it was extremely impressive to me that they had enough fuel left over to attempt an at-sea landing, something that they could not do before with geostationary missions. And now, with their full thrust version of the Falcon 9, with its extended fuel tanks, densified and super chilled propellant, it's now possible to attempt landings of the first stage. At least for some of the geostationary missions anyway. Some heavier payloads may require that extra performance, but for ones that don't, they can now attempt to try to land and recover the first stages of the Falcon 9. That's amazing! But all of these drone ship landing attempts finally paid off on April 8th, when SpaceX successfully landed the first stage of the Falcon 9 on the drone ship, of course I still love you. And they recovered the rocket stage a few days later when the drone ship sailed into port with the first stage still up right and intact. <laughs> this very well might be the first stage that SpaceX relaunches on another flight. This is a big deal to me. Potentially every mission that SpaceX flies with their Falcon 9 and maybe even their Falcon Heavy when that debuts, they would be able to recover all of the first stages of those missions. And that's just incredible to me. We might be looking at a space revolution right around the corner. If, if this whole plan is as economical as Elon Musk hopes it is, then this is going to change everything. And a regular Joe Schmo like me might be able to actually go to space someday. I'm definitely going to be paying close attention to both Blue Origin and SpaceX's progress over the rest of the year. And I'm really glad about the fact that Blue Origin seems to be a lot more open with what they're doing, especially since some journalists got to see the inner workings of their factory recently. 
Either way, I hope that both companies have nothing but success and are able to continue with all of their progress so that I can ride on both vehicles someday, both the new Shepard capsule and the Dragon capsule. Maybe even visit the space station before it's destroyed. Ah! Speaking of space stations, specifically space habitats, NASA has been doing a lot of studies on large habitats for astronauts during the trip to Mars. And in my next video, I'm going to be talking in depth about those different studies and the progress that they've all made since they began, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching this video though. My name is Michael Clark, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think about all of this rocket landing slash reusability stuff. I'm gonna be talking, or at least trying to talk about a lot more space stuff on this channel that I don't have the opportunity to talk as in depth on with tomorrow. And especially with how frequently we're putting out videos there, I'm gonna really try to be putting out a lot more stuff here. But if you haven't heard of tomorrow, you should be watching our stuff there. I do lots of videos uh, called Space Pods that are in the same type of format like this. But we also have our live show every Saturday, so you should definitely be watching that stuff if you don't know about it already. Also, if you like Kerbal Space Program, I've started putting out videos of that on my gaming channel, Astraludos, and I'll be taking requests for part tests and mission plans that you guys might want to see. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and don't forget, add Astra to the stars.